can I put it like this? The longevity of your Rehoboth is determined by what you do at Beersheba. The long, because Beersheba means settlement, establishment, and it's always a place of worship. Do you know that Isaac began his journey in Beersheba? And that except for a few years in Hebron at the end of his life, he completed his journey in Beersheba. The place of its done, the place of its finished is Beersheba. That is settlement. Let me give you a little background. One about one year ago today, God began to, to move Papa as a prophet in the house, and, and, and he was telling us, is it time to labor? And we did a lot of prayer and fasting, and that was because God wanted us to enter into a season of harvest for this coming year. I know the Bible says that if you'll wait for the vision, if you'll tarry, that, that vision will surely appear. Amen? The vision must appear. And so uh, that was a, a year ago to today. And, uh, or thereabouts, you know what I mean? It was, it was around this time. And uh, he had said, we are laboring now, we are sowing seed for a time of harvest. And now this month that we're entering into, if you really understand what God is doing, you will understand that God is answering or rewarding or bringing about the harvest of the labor that was done about a year ago. And I want to encourage you, even if maybe you weren't a partaker, tell the Lord, Lord, make me a partaker now. You can still labor. How many of you know, and I said this earlier, the purpose of labor is not labor. The purpose of labor is not fruitfulness even. The purpose of labor is to bring you into rest. Hebrews 4.11 says, let us therefore labor that we might enter into rest. So the purpose of labor is to bring you to rest. And in Lamentations 5, 5, it says there, there was a persecution placed upon the neck of Israel. And it says, and we labored and did not enter into rest. So their labor was not producing rest. But God is so faithful. He's so faithful that the labor that we have been doing, God is bringing us to a place around. Yeah, it says their necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. So that means that their labor was not producing what it was supposed to produce. And Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and labor, and I will give you rest. But the purpose of the rest, why was he giving them rest? Why? So ultimately, you can be drawn to him. And so we want to we, we, we look at the story of Isaac. Because the journey of Isaac is so important for you and me as a believer today. Galatians 4.28 says, now we, let's read this together on three, one, two, three, let's go. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So as Isaac was, we are. As Isaac was, we are. So if you want to know what you are, you must look at what he was. And so... There's an incredible journey that Isaac went on, and I'm not going to go into it too deep, but this is today, but please, you must be here on Wednesday, you must be here on Sunday, be a partaker, because God always sends his word for healing, for freedom, for deliverance, so it's so important, you are, you are getting the word, amen. Um, I want us to, is the picture ready? Can you bring it up? Okay. Oh, it's up, perfect. Can you guys see that? Can you guys see the map up here? Okay, um, can you see, can you see Beersheba? Can you see Rehoboth? Can you see Gerar? Can you guys see it? Is it showing up here? Can you guys see it? So I want you to understand this month, Rehoboth is your place of rest. Beersheba is the place where you encounter God, where you build an altar, and all the fathers of faith Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all had encounters with God in Beersheba. But before they could get to Beersheba, they had to get to Rehoboth. And before they got to Rehoboth, they had to go through what? Isaac and Sitna. And they started, and Isaac started in Gerar. And so I want you to see this journey. Um, how many of you know what Isaac means? Striving. 
the place of striving. And then from the place of striving to the place of quarreling until he enters the place of rest. But I want you to see something so, so, so cool. Can you see the details on the map there? Where is, where is Gerar and Sitna? Where is it? Can you see? It's close to the water, right? How many of you know that the closer to the water you get, usually the lower the elevation you are? Can I say that again? The place of Gerar is low elevation. But look at Beersheba. Where is Beersheba situated? On a mountain. So that means that God took Isaac from a low place, from Gerar. And as he began to labor, because this is the thing you have to understand about Isaac, is that he labored. He labored. He dug a well. And people came out and they strove against him. And then he went. And then he dug another well. He wouldn't let the striving and the fighting of the low place stop him from doing what he needed to do to enter the place of rest. I pray for you today that whatever it is that needs to shift, whatever it needs to change so you can enter your real path so you can go to the place of Beersheba whatever it is that's needed is released to you this month in Jesus name Amen. so they went from the low place they went from the low place and there's a lot you're going to learn about this amen I don't have much time today but I just want you to understand he went from a low place and he labored and he dug a well and God brought him to the place of rest to the place where he can begin to flourish to the place where he can begin to grow but it says and he went from Rehoboth to Beersheba and I want you to understand something please I think this is so 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 important don't settle for rest without worship. No, no, listen to me. Let me say it again. Don't settle for rest without an altar. Beersheba is the place of encounter. Everything that God does is to draw you closer to him. If the only reason you're in church is for your breakthrough, you're missing it. It's okay to start there. It's okay to want to enter rest, but don't sit down in a rail bath and miss Beersheba. Thank God it didn't end in rail bath. Because I want to tell you something. Listen to me. You know what Beersheba means? Do you know where Beersheba got its name from? It got it from Abraham. And Abraham struck a covenant with the Philistine before. And Bear means well, Sheba means seven. Essentially, the name of it is the, the well of sevenfold covenant. There, there is, Beersheba is a place of completion, a place of it's done, it's finished. If you only stop at rest, because how many people are looking for rest, right? Yeah, you're looking for rest, but if you stop at just physical rest and you miss the altar you'll never be able to maintain it the long it, can I put it like this the longevity of your rail bath is determined by what you do at Beersheba the long because Beersheba means settlement establishment and is always a place of worship do you know that Isaac began his journey in Beersheba? And that except for a few years in Hebron at the end of his life, he completed his journey in Beersheba. The place of its done, the place of its finished is Beersheba. That is settlement. But many people stop at a rest because they don't know that rest is meant to lead into worship. God did not reduce your hours at work and increase your pay so that you can cut down in your service to him. Are you hearing me today, church? Because I want you to understand. Listen, I was so blessed by the message Papa was sharing today. Can I tell you something? Stewardship, the mentality of my tomorrow. And when I say tomorrow, I mean the tomorrow, tomorrow. 
the end of the age, when you stand before the Father, the mentality of if you are just living for what you have here, you are missing your future. This is why God draws you. He puts you in rest. So your worship is without burden. Hallelujah. There are many people that I hear today and it's like, the more time you have, the less God matters. But when God is bringing you to the place of rest, it's not so you can stay there. It's good. Your skills come out. Your talents come out. Your faith is encouraged because, wow, all these... <laughs> can I tell you something? Do you want to you know one of the biggest things I, I, I've ever seen or biggest errors I've ever seen is that when someone's prayer is finally answered, it's like they drop God. No, no, no. Listen, you don't understand. The same God that did it for you is the same God that keeps it. Yeah. But what he's looking for, because people don't know how to transition from prayer to worship. Your rest requires an altar. Beersheba is the place where you encounter God. Abraham, let me, uh, I'm going <laughs> to, praise the Lord. I'm going to round up really quickly. Let me give you some scriptures really fast. Genesis 26, 23 to 25. Genesis 46, 1. And then Genesis, <laughs> four people encountered the Lord at Beersheba. Hagar, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I want to show you them really quickly. I'm going to, please, can I have five minutes? Give me five minutes. I want to show you them, and then we're going to pray. Because I, I believe so strongly that this message is coming today. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching today, but I'm actually I'm here on assignment because you must make it to Beersheba. You must make it to the place where you are encountering God in a real and tangible way this month. It goes beyond the harvest for you. Because God is not just looking for your physical harvest, but he's looking to harvest you to himself. Amen. Hallelujah. The altar is the place of encounter. The place of encounter. You must encounter him this month. I'm trusting God that for you, that for you this month, it shall be a month of divine encounter in the name of Jesus Christ. And whatever has damaged your altar, whatever has put ashes on your altar, whatever has caused the altar to break down whatever has caused worship that's not for God upon the altar today in the name of Jesus under the anointing on this altar let the fire of God purge your altar today in the name of Jesus Christ you shall see God you shall encounter God in the name of Jesus Amen. Genesis 26, 23 to 25, really quickly. It says, and he went from thence, talking about Rehoboth, to Beersheba, 24. And what happened? And what happened? And the Lord appeared the same night and said, I'm the God of Abraham, my father. Fear not, for I'm with you. I will bless you. I will multiply your seed for Abraham's servant's sake. And what was the response of Isaac, 25? And he built an altar there. Listen, whenever, listen to me church, listen to me. Whenever you encounter God, there is a response from you that's required. Whenever God appears, whenever God appears, there is a response on your behalf. Whether it's thanksgiving, whether it's hallelujah. Maybe, there, maybe there's something that God will call you to or acquire of himself. But in the place of encounter, it's not one way. God wants to encounter you too. Amen. Genesis 46.1. Look at what happened to Jacob, I mean Isaac's son, Genesis 46, 1. Really, really quickly, please. I know, I know we're doing our best. Get ready for Genesis 21 next from verses 14 to 19 after this. It says, and Israel took his journey with all that he had, and he came to what? Beersheba, and offered sacrifices unto the God of his father. Beersheba is a place of worship. It's a place of encounter. It's a place to build the altar. God is freeing your time for the altar. Hallelujah. Uh, Genesis 21, 
14 to 19, really quickly. It says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered where? And wandered where? In the wilderness of Beersheba. Verse 15. And the water was spent in the bottle. For some of you, your water has been spent. Your oil has been spent. But today, 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 let there be a release of fresh oil your way in the name of Jesus. It says the water was spent and she cast the child to the shrubs. I can't deal with it anymore. And she went and sat herself down over again in a good way. And it was a bow shot for her and she said, let me not see the death of my child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And maybe some of you, you are weeping today. There are some things that you are crying about internally. I want to encourage you in the place of Beersheba, there's an encounter waiting for you. Her end was not at Beersheba. It was a beginning. 17 and verse 18. And God heard the voice of the lad and the angel of the Lord called to Hagar. Where was she? At Beersheba by the well she encountered God and it says what ails you Hagar fear not for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is verse 19 oh yeah arise lift up the lad hold him for you'll make a great nation verse 19 and God opened her eyes what did he open her eyes to and she saw a well and she saw a well my prayer for you today is that whatever has been closing your eyes to divine encounter Whatever has been closing your eyes to that well, to that altar, to that place where you're renewed and refreshed in His presence. Rise up to your feet, rise up to your feet. My prayer today is that your eyes will open to your rail bar and to your bear sheep. That you will locate that place of encounter. If you don't yet know Jesus, pray this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I believe you died for me. You were buried for me and you rose again for me. Thank you for paying the price for my sins. Oh Lord, I want to know you. I want to encounter your rest. I want to worship you at that place of Beersheba. Oh Lord, that I may know you. Lord, that I may know you. Lord, I declare today, you are my Lord and my Savior. I receive you into my life. May I encounter you today in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you today. I pray for you today. We're going to get ready to take the communion and I pray for you today. Whatever has closed your eyes, whatever has closed your eyes. Maybe it was the striving and you stay too long at striving. Or you stay, you stay too long at quarreling. Or you stayed even too long at rest. Whatever has hindered you from that place of worship. Whatever has hindered you from transitioning to Beersheba. Today and in this month under this anointing. I want you to begin to pray in tongues right now. There's someone here, there's something you need to repent of. God hasn't shown me, but I'm hearing that there's someone you need to repent. There's something you need to repent of. Just tell the Lord right now. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, take me to that place of Beersheba. We heard this morning about possibility mindset. Some of you encountered the Philistines and you stopped at one well, not knowing that two stops over, there was a place of rest. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, restore my faith. Restore possibility mindset. Pray, 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 pray. Baba 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 ba